Hello everyone, I hope you are well. Today is an insightful and interesting video. I think you're really going to enjoy this. We're going to look at Purple Group, who owns Easy Equities. We're going to look at Stadio and Robin Hood. Purple Group is the main theme of this video. And we're going to look at a very interesting and insightful metric, especially if you look at business to consumer companies like these three. So, let's look at the trends. These are Google Trends. Google picks up everything. Everything you Google, everything you search, everything you use, Google picks it up. So it does not lie. These trends are really, really cool. So if you look at the five-year graph of just Easy Equities, Easy Equities, you know, Purple Group owns Easy Equities. So if you look at the Easy Equities five-year graph, you'll see that there was a massive spike in 2020 and then a gradual decrease and it's been decreasing. If you look at the 12-month graph, you'll see that there was, you know, a constant decrease in the number of searches or trend. That is not looking great as a graph. If you look at Stadio on the other hand, which is something completely different, it's education, but it's just to compare a negative graph versus a positive graph. If you look at Stadio, if you zoom out and look at the five year time frame, you'll see that the it's been volatile, you know, as students enroll in January, there's a big surge in January, and then as the semester starts, there is a decrease. But if you look at the five year, you'll see it is increasing gradually, constantly, even if you ignore the volatility. Where if you look at the 12 months, you'll also see if you, this time, exactly this time last year, versus now, you'll see there's been a massive increase in amounts of searches and interest in Stadio on the internet. Now, it is very important to note that trends do not always have a direct representation of the actual results. Remember, Stadio is now starting to advertise a lot. So people are Googling it, people are searching it, going on the websites, looking at the courses, but it does not mean all of those users or potential clients are actually becoming students. Same with easy equities. It doesn't necessarily mean that if there is a downward slope, that people aren't using the platform or aren't making bigger deposits or any, anything like that. This is just a metric. It's not the be all end all. Very important to note. So let's look at the easy equities graph again. What made the trend go up in 2020? You'll see a massive spike there. Well, easy. The retail frenzy. When you go to a braai, when you went into a club, when you, you know, walk down around the street, it's likely that people talked about investing, you know, stock market investing. Because when stocks go up, everyone wants to invest. And when stocks go down, people don't want to invest unless people talk about it. We've also seen that with crypto, the narrative. Once crypto starts going up, people invest in it. When it goes down, people sell it and don't talk about it. It is the narrative. It's the narrative of this industry. So let's do a like-for-like -like comparison. We did Stadio versus uh, purple group or easy equities which is completely different but stadio is a representation of a good graph a graph that i want to see something that makes me positive as an investor Stadio is a company i own versus the easy equities one does not look great so let's compare like for like easy equities based in south africa versus robin hood based in america if you look at both easy equities and robin hood at the same time you'll see that there was a massive spike which was in that 2020 retail frenzy and at the same time it started decreasing when the bear market started when share prices weren't just rocketing to the moon anymore both platforms are for retail investors and the narrative plays a big role in this industry so if you look at the share prices of both you'll also see a downward slope recently so when people are using the platforms, people tend to buy shares and people tend to buy the companies that they are, you know, for example, people using Easy Equity, so they buy Purple Group shares, the narrative. And if you look at the share prices, it supports the narrative of, you know, lower trends or, or lower use using of the platform. Purple Group is releasing results soon. I'm not expecting it to be great. I'm not expecting it to be good. I think it might be disappointing and here's my reasons why. The local economy is under pressure. There is higher inflation rates, high interest rates and less disposable income. And if there's less disposable income, people tend to invest less because they have less money to invest. If we look at the trends, there is also the backing that, you know, there's less interest. Less and less people are talking about investing. Less people are talking about it at price. Less people are, you know, getting FOMO. They just want to invest. They're making plans. They want to invest. So there is that. The, the narrative is not currently positive for a platform like Executives or even Robinhood. And it is likely that the narrative will change again once we start seeing a prominent bull market. So this is a kind of cyclical business because bull markets happen, bear markets happen. So in short, I don't think these results will be great. How the share price will react if the results are in fact disappointing. Remember, we could be surprised positively. 
But if it is the uh, disappointing results, what the share price does will be a mystery. It is trading at a high PE ratio, at a high valuation, at a high price to sales, especially if you compare with the, the, the like for like comparisons. But the question is, how will the market react? Will the market be forward looking and think, you know what? There is potential partnerships in the pipeline. They have potential products in the pipeline, potential international expansion. You know, it is just a bear market. A bull market will come again. That narrative, you know, will the market be forward looking? If so, then the share price might not react bad or it might even go up. If the market loses patience and think, okay, well, they haven't re released uh, the product that they said they would, uh, the, market, the economy isn't looking great, you know, people are investing less, there, there's less trades, less revenue, and also, you know, the partnerships aren't happening. You know, that part of the equation where the market will lose patience and we might see a drop in the share price. Nobody knows. Personally, I love the platform. I use Easy Equities personally, and we even have FinMia baskets on Easy Equities, both on JC and US. It's, it's really cool baskets. Go check that out. I also really back the management. What they've achieved is incredible. But I'm on the sidelines for now. I've been on the sidelines for quite some time, and it's going to be interesting to watch these results. It's always important to remember that a good company does not always mean a good stock. A good platform, a quality platform does not always mean a good stock. The price you pay matters. And we've seen that more and more, you know, in an environment where high growth is not the only thing people care about anymore. It is about how, what valuation we're trading at. Are you delivering to that valuation? If you are trading at a high P ratio or high price to sales ratio, are you delivering for that growth? Whether we're going to see that, I'm not sure. It's going to be interesting to watch and we will do a commentary video, Paul and myself, on the results as soon as it is out. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that video. But let us know in the comments whether you think these results coming out soon. It might be end of this week or early next week. Will it be positive or negative? Would like to hear your opinion. For me personally, I'm on the sidelines for now. But I love the company. It is really a great platform. It is what they've achieved is incredible. But if you look at the trends, you know, let's see. It's going to be an interesting metric to compare. Next week, if you found this, you know, this trend conversation insightful, make sure you watch our videos next week. We're going to do a same comparison comparing Stadio versus Advitech, two educational plays on the JSE, and compare their Google Trends. We've seen a, a, a trend increase in both. There is a massive demand for private education in South Africa, but once again, you've got the economy that is not looking too great. Very interesting. Let us know in the comments what you think of these results. We'll cover it as soon as it is out. Hope you have a great day. Cheers.